Uh, my name is Deron Chavis. I am the founder and director of an organization called Happily Natural Day. We are a nonprofit that's dedicated to holistic health, wellness, social change, and the transformation of the built environment for food justice and climate resilience. Um, we've been in existence for about 20 years and uh, we steward this space plus like eight other urban gardens and farms across Central Virginia. Uh, this space is five acres and what we do here is we use the space uh, as a training ground to teach people how to grow their own food. It's also uh, uh, a climate resiliency demonstration and a food justice demonstration. So we encourage people to come here to see what they can do in their own communities to address the lack of access to the food, as well as to address some of the issues that are coming along with climate change, right? Um, so today what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna first give you a tour of the space. You know, we'll walk around and I'll kind of show you what we got going on. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the folks that are on the murals around the space. Um, and then uh, we'll, you know, sit down in the shade underneath our pavilion and we'll have a little bit of a chat, you know, talk a little bit about what you all are doing. I want to know about it, you know, and um, yeah, we'll just build a conversation from there. I guess y'all brought food to eat, you know what I mean? Yes. And yeah, we'll cut, we'll cap it off like that. Uh, so, with Josiah, my man asked me, what's the significance of the name Sankofa, right? Uh, Sankofa is a, it's a West African uh, term. It means look back to your past. India. Oh. One mic. I was, you know, I'll pass the mic. You want to share? Uh, you were talking. I didn't know if you had something you want to share. Just be quiet. It's hot. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but Sankofa is a West African symbol that means go back and fetch it. It means look back to your past to find the lessons from. Uh, from there and bring them into your present to solve your problems of today, right? So uh, we named this space Sankofa because none of what you see here is new. All of this is ancient technology that we're applying today to solve the problems that we face as black and brown communities in the middle of the city, right? So before I go any further, I want to ask one question. Y'all, I'm presuming that y'all know what a food desert is. So can somebody drop that? Like, what's the, what is a food desert? Like when the area is like short on food. Yep. And limited to healthy options. So. There's, no, there's no healthy options, mm -hmm. right? So this area here is designated as a food desert, right? So it's a, the USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, says that a food desert is an area that doesn't have access to healthy food within a mile or more of where the people live. You dig what I'm saying? So, what usually people talk about when they talk about food deserts, they talk about the place not having a grocery store, right? So we know that black and brown low-income communities are not exactly the most attractive to major grocery stores. You know, your Aldi's, your Publix, your Whole Foods, your Trader Joe's, they don't really be trying to come set up shop in the middle of the hood, right? So if the grocery store ain't coming, what does the community do in order to get access to healthy food? These are the questions that we gotta answer. So the second question I ask, I ask folks when we talk about uh, food deserts is, how long, when was the refrigerated truck invented? The hint is a black guy that invented it. 
But when did that, when did the, when did the, grow, when did the refrigerated truck first come into existence? I don't know the answer. Like my guess. You could guess? Is it? I don't like, expect you to know, but what's we'll it? Like what's maybe it? like late 90s? Nah, it's a little bit earlier than that, but that's a good guess. 1913. That's a little bit early. That's, damn, it was like, okay. What model T? I'm going to say the 60s. Oh. It's actually like the mid 50s. Wow. When refrigerated trucks first came into play. I'm thinking like the 50s, you know, when you started to get the five lanes in. Second question. Has there always been highways? When did they first build the highways? That's a good guess. It's like 1954. So check this out. Refrigerated trucks and highways are necessary in order for you to move food hundreds of miles, right? So what did people do before the 1950s in order to get food? They grew it, they right? They grew their own. Here's a question, bonus point. Where was the first grocery store I don't know. Set up. What, when, was the when did we see the first grocery store in the United States? Probably in a white neighborhood. No, no, when, not where. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, when? More when than where. Maybe when the first pinch was in 1940. It was like 19, like late 1940s, early 50s. So. I'm asking these questions to kind of think, you know, critically about what we're talking about when we're talking about food deserts. Before 1950, there was no highways, there was no refrigerated trucks, and there wasn't even a grocery store. So did people eat before 1950? Yeah. They ain't no food, they ain't want no, how did they eat food? There was no grocery store, right? That don't even make sense. Because how did we get here? People didn't have food before 1950, right? So I'm gonna just leave that there and let you like meditate on that as we go through the space. You know what I mean? And um, don't hesitate to ask questions as we go along as we walk through the space. All right? All right. So let's walk. Cause it's oh, question. Go for it. Oh, all right. So check it. Little history. What was the question, Deron? The question was, when did we first start this garden? We founded Sankofa Community Orchard in January 2021. So we've only been here for two and a half years, right? So this is an example of what you can do with consistency, right, in a short amount of time when your resources are available. Um, what did it look like when you got access to it and who, too much owns, to this, who owns the land? Um, so before we got here, this was just grass. The entire space was just grass. I'll give you the history of the space. So look behind us. Behind those murals is what we call Reedy Creek. You gotta pee, there's an outhouse. Like right behind the mural, so you don't have to pee in the creek. We need to edit this video. Right, So if you gotta use the bathroom, the outhouse is right here. All right. What's your name, dear? India. India. Uh, you know, there's one here and there's one right there, so if you gotta use it, Take your pick. All right. Uh, history of the space. Reedy Creek flooded back in the 1950s, like 1959. It was a hurricane, major hurricane in the in, uh, in Richmond. And I don't know if you look around. You look over here in the neighborhood. In the front, you can see that this is like the lowest point in this area. So when that creek flooded, all of this was underwater. There were like five houses here that all got demolished because it got 
water damage and the city tore the houses down and proceeded to cut the grass on the space from 1960 to when we got the space in 2020, well, December 2020, right? So everything that you see here is a result of our work. So yeah, let's walk because I know it's gonna, you know. Do you want us to keep recording? You if we want to, you, know, you can keep. It's recording. whatever. It don't matter to me. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You can keep on filming. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna document our experience here, so you know. Yeah. All right. So check it. Yeah, just that from of us cool. Is that Carl? <laughs> Is the car on? You might want to cut the car off. I don't want, I don't want y'all to kill y'all gas. So, Layla, yeah, come get this heavy. What we do here is we grow food explicitly to address the lack of access to healthy food. So, the practices that we use got to be in alignment with making sure the food is healthy for the community, right? So the first thing I want to just point out is that we call ourselves biological farmers. So we make sure that we don't add any pesticides, no herbicides to any of the uh, produce that we grow. We grow everything all naturally, right? So it's basically us setting up the space and reducing food waste by composting so behind this, uh, behind this future mural is our compost area. We take all the food waste, put it in the compost, let it break down, and then use that compost as a fertilizer to build our soil. All right, y'all, make sure we're listening. There's someone talking. Come on, be respectful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just I'm gonna, cut the mic. Right mm -hmm. Y'all follow me. Is this how you do it? Did I, did I tell you? Y'all stick close to me. How about that? Hold it. India, join.